Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Up Close and Personal with Angela on behalf of Aspiring Authors Magazine. Today, I am taking the opportunity to bring awareness to mental health. Of course, this is Mental Health Awareness Month, and I want to take the opportunity to bring awareness to what? affects our brown community because this is one of the topics that's always brushed under the rugs. It's always a stigma behind mental health in the brown community. And we are here today to share just a little bit about what we do in the mental health um, field um, and how it has impacted us and share a little bit about our brands and to just enlighten you guys on today. For those that do not know who I am, I am Angela Thomas-Smith, the queen of collaboration. I'm the founder of AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign. I'm also the CEO of Aspiring Authors Magazine. Of course, my whole desire is to bridge the gap between brown authors all over this world and to touch on topics that's affecting our brown community that other people don't want to talk about, the things that they brush under the rugs. So if you would, please take an opportunity to share this in your circle of influence. You never know who may be impacted by something that's shared on today. You never know who may need something that is shared on today. So without further ado, I'm going to move out the way and I'm going to bring up my guests. I'm going to bring them up one by one and allow them to introduce themselves and to share just a little bit about themselves. And then we're going to jump into the conversation about mental health in the Brown community. So the first person I'm going to bring up is going to be Overseer Tamala. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you today? I'm good. And you? I'm great. So if you would please introduce yourself real quick. Okay, I'm Overseer Tamla Lucas of Come Home, Stop Talking About It. Um, hello, I'm an author, a singer, a songwriter. You are very low. Oh, can you hear me? I got my sound up high. Can you hear me now? Hi! It sounds like you were far back, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm an author. I am a songwriter. Um, let me see what else. My ministry is Come Home, Stop Talking About It. And so um, I've been working with all different kind of people. And I'm also an educator. I've been working with children since 1990. So I've seen a lot of mental illness going on for years. So I'm glad to be here. Amen, amen. Well, we're glad to have you here with us on tonight. So our next guest is Miss Sophia Cooper. Hello, everybody. Welcome, My welcome, name. welcome. How are you tonight? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm Sophia okay. Cooper, author, mental health advocate. I write a blog called My Extremely Anxious Thoughts that posts every week. I do a mental health moment every Monday um, on my blog and on Facebook. And I'm an author. Uh, My fifth book should be out in October. Um, And the sixth book is all mental health related. So that's the one to look out for. It'll be out next May. Amen, amen. Well, I'm glad to have you here with us on tonight. Our next guest is Miss Takiria, and I probably messed her name up. Yep, it's Takira. Takira, <laughs> I knew. I knew, I knew. Please good. forgive me. Please charge that. Please just charge it to my mouth and, and not my heart, because I truly <laughs> love you, and I I, I definitely. I, I'm just not good with names. I'm sorry. I'm just a country old girl. Just oh, not good with I, ain't, <laughs> I ain't tripping about it. But hello, everybody. My name is Sakira Terrell. I go by Coach TK. I am a um, trauma specialist. I have been a trauma therapist for over five years. I have certifications, you know, pedigree, all of that stuff, right? That qualifies me to do the work that I do as a clinician. And I'm a specialized with EMDR. 
Um, I also have um, certifications with compassion fatigue and burnout and all of that stuff. I am a published author. I've written four books, well, written two books, co-authored in two, and I am the CEO and founder of Minding My Vision LLC, where we bridge the gap between biblical principles and theoretical concepts so that we can experience true healing and wholeness and not just one or the other. Wow. That's amazing. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you're here tonight. <laughs> and we have, we have Coach Ashley. How are you? Ashley, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Hi, how are you? There apparently is some technical issues going on. I tell you, the enemy is always busy. I always trying to be up in our internet, but you know what? Yet we press. Um, Coach Ashley, are you there? Well, all my prayer warriors, y'all know what time it is, so y'all know what to do. So without further ado, y'all, I just really, really want to give these individuals an opportunity to share about what they do um, and what mental health means to them. And then I really want to kind of just talk about um, all that's going on around us and, and, and how that plays a part in our mental and how we can focus on staying mentally well um, with all this around us going on. Because oftentimes we get caught up in letting our environment dictate how we care for ourselves, how we nurture ourselves, how we even operate in this world. Um, I myself have battled with depression and PTSD. I didn't know what these things were um, until I was a victim of domestic violence. And they labeled me as having PTSD. And, and when I realized through going through therapy, I, I, I seek professional help. I, I, I went to therapy. I, I saw a psychiatrist. I, I, I saw um, two different therapists. And seeing these therapists, I was able to find out that, hey, I had been battling depression all these years. And it was because I had been battling depression that I was even able, that, that I allowed myself to get to a point to where I was and allowed myself to be a victim of domestic violence. But I didn't know what it was. So I didn't know what I should have been looking for. I didn't know what the signs were. I didn't know. Nobody told me that I was, I, because I didn't want to get out of bed and I, I was eating and gaining weight that, you know, I was having problems and that I needed to, get help. Nobody told me that, you know, they just kept telling me I needed to be strong. You know, we, that's what people tell us when we, we brown and we come from these families, you know, be strong, put on your big girl panties, you know, suck it up. You know, that's the things that you hear. But I'm here today to let people know that it's okay to cry. It's okay to say that you are not okay. But just knowing that there's help out there. And that there's people out there like you that have been where you are, but they decided to do something about it. So they're able to be in the positions that they're in today. So um, I want to start with Coach TK. And I want her to share just a little bit about why she got into the profession that she she's in. And um, just give a little background to how did you get here? Okay. Um, so how did I get to where I am? Um, I've struggled with depression and PTSD for myself as well. And um, I had experienced um, ancestral abuse, um, trauma, been through a lot of different things. 
And I can remember in undergraduate school, I was working on my psychology degree. I was getting my bachelor's in psychology and I'm just learning so many different things. And I found myself really struggling. Um, I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was losing my mind. Um, I was in um, several abusive relationships since I was 17 years old or, you know, that young. And while I was there, um, I attempted to, I, I attempted suicide. I had a plan. I wrote a note. I was going to follow through with it. And something, we call the Holy Spirit something, right? But something told me to just go to my friend. And I went to my friend and I told her, I'm not well. We went to the um, emergency department on U of M's campus um, where I got, I was treated well. And then they, um, I did inpatient. However, due to a lack of folks who look like us, right? Um, and also minimization of the spiritual part. I was misdiagnosed and put on heavy medications where I was almost stupefied and um, it caused me to have an allergic reaction called Steven Johnson syndrome, where I was in ICU. They had to resuscitate me. I had like marks all over my face and my arms. And I just didn't want people of color. I didn't want those of us who really do have a deep connection with God, but also are struggling with their mental health. It wasn't until I found a clinician who looked like me where I got the help that I needed. And she was like, no, you're not this. You're not all of these other labels. They tried to slap on me. She said, no, you're struggling with PTSD. And we came up with a treatment plan and I got so much better. And I actually ended up graduating on a Dean's list when I graduated from U of M. I then um, pursued a master's degree at Ashland Theological Seminary in Ohio. And that's where I have my clinical degree in counseling. And how I'm here now is just by one, the grace of God, but two, understanding the importance of having women of color in positions and being positioned in a place where we, can, we have a space to talk about the things that we're going through, to talk about the pain that we've been through without having to wear the cape, without having to be superwoman, without having to minimize my experiences. And so that's kind of how I got to where I'm at, um, Angela. Wow, that is definitely amazing. Um, I definitely thank you for sharing that um, and being transparent. Um, it's people like yourself, um, that give hope to others like us because some years ago I wouldn't have been able to sit and, and, and been able to be in the presence of <laughs> brown people like yourself that 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 <laughs> that know how I feel and and can relate to the things that I've been through and, and able to, to talk about them and, and not be judgmental and, and, and not be critical and, 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 and just not look at me like I stink. <laughs> <laughs> like, turn their nose up, like something, mm -hmm. like I'm bothering them. Like, okay, like literally there was one day and, and this was in 2020, you know, I called my sister and I told her, I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. I say, but I just feel real fun. I'm like, I just, she was like, calm down. She was like, you probably need to get off the computer. She said, you need, she said, have you ate anything? You know, she just began to talk to me and she was like, stop stressing. She said, stop worrying. She said, what you worrying about? Like, I was just having a, 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 a panic attack, I guess. I was just going, it, it felt like I was going 100 miles per hour and wasn't going nowhere. And the fact that she took the time to talk to me, you know, a, a, a lot of people would have been like, yeah, just shake it off, just shake it off. But she took the time and she went through things. She talked to, and then she made sure I was okay before I got off the phone with her. You know, just having people like that um, 
and, and there's been plenty of times I, I want to bring um Sophia on next because um even though I don't personally know Sophia, um I've never met her personally, but there's been times when um this woman of God has reached out to me and just shared words of encouragement and not even knowing that at that moment I was going through something or may have been having these crazy thoughts in my head. Cause you're my sister girl. She just, <laughs> just, I mean, just encouraging. Um, so introduce yourself and share a little bit about how you got here. I, I think I tumbled here. I might have clawed and scratched my way here because like Coach TK, I have the trauma and I was traumatized before I even had a chance to discover who I was because it happened when I was a child. So I grew up with this cloak of the victim. I, I wore it like a designer dress. I was the victim. He hurt me. He hurt me. And I wore it just all over me. And I think wearing that cloak of the victim allowed me to be victimized so many more times because I still had the mindset of a victim. So I went back to school. I got educated. I got a bachelor's. Um, in psychology and human service counseling. And I learned a lot more about me. And I not only fit the spirit person, but I got a lot of clarity about all the stuff that was going on in my head. So um, it, it was just a fight. I had to take off that victim wardrobe and step into a survivor mentality. And when I was able to do that, life just flowed a lot easier. Things became a lot clearer. Not that I don't still have my bad days because I've suffered with depression since I was probably six years old. Um, but life has been so much more bearable since I took off that victim cloak and put on survivor. So I fought my way here. And by the grace of God, I am here. So I mentor women and a couple of guys who have been abused, um, whether it be family or in a relationship. Um, and we talk because I don't have my license yet. So all I am is a mentor, but we talk and I help them walk through some of those situations and talk through some of that trauma and try and see how much more different life can be when you just change your mindset a little. You will still struggle with the mental health parts of it. It's probably not going anywhere. It's something you have to learn to live with, but you can live a different life. Wow. That's definitely amazing. I tell you, I had to wake up and realize that I wanted to live, you know, like Coach T. Um, I, I can't count how many times I tried to take my life, but I'm reminded of um, a phrase, what if? You know, he dropped that in my spirit in 2020 because in the midst of the pandemic, there it was here, I was coming back to Facebook and coming back to the light, coming back to the light because Sophia knows um, in 2018, um, I personally went through some things and um, came away from Facebook. Um, I physically um, was ill um, and people didn't know, but because of that physical um, ailment, it, it caused my mental to, to suffer too because of the lack bash from people. Because when people don't understand and people don't know what you're going through, they can be cruel. They can be hateful and they can be mean. And when I came back to Facebook, I almost went into a great depression, but it was 
going live and being able to talk and being able to share, being able to uh, allow God to be who he said he would be in my life because so long I ran. You know, I, I, I seen somebody post on Facebook um, day before yesterday about um, autism. And they said it was demonic spirit. Um, that thing hit me because I have a cousin that suffers from autism. Not only did it hit me in that way, but if it you what what what, what was you trying to say? Because his father is a pastor, so what was you really trying to say? You know, that thing hit me in three different ways. It hit so many ways because now you're saying it's a demonic spirit. So then now I'm, I'm saying like, okay, it just running through my head. So I'm like, okay, people just need to be educated. People need to know how to say things and, 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 and when they should say things. You know, if, if we don't know, we'll continue to walk in darkness and we'll continue to, to, to hurt people. And when hurt people hurt, what what do they normally do? They hurt people. And it, the cycle continues. You know, we, we have to understand that a lot of the things that we're enduring, we're enduring because of generational curses. You know, we're going through stuff that we don't have really no control over that, that, that was passed down to us from our ancestors because of how they was treated. But we have to learn how to de-learn some of the stuff that we've been taught and, 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 and how to allow ourselves to be open and free to receive because a lot of us are coming and they have really truly figured out who we are. And because of all experiences, we're able to share our experiences to help you. So, Overseer Tamala, you're next. I, I, I want you to share just a little bit. Um, how did you get here? What was this journey oh. like for you? Well, hallelujah. Glory be to God. One day, uh, somebody told me to write a book about my mother. And I was like, hmm, what am I going to write about? You know, and when I started writing the book, I realized she was in a domestic violence relationship throughout her whole life. And I was like, wow, sometimes you you go through life and you just act like, you know, you forget or something. Something happens with your brain, you know. And as I was writing this book, I was like, well, that all I saw was black eyes and bruises and all this stuff growing up. So in my head, I'm thinking abuse is physical until I married my first husband. Then I found out <laughs> abuse is something else. It's mental, spiritual, emotional. I said, oh, my God. And, and when you in that kind of uh, situation and you're trying to explain it to somebody, you sound kind of crazy because when you're trying to tell somebody, look, I'm going through this, this person's doing this, and, and this person's doing that, and, and they're looking at you like, girl, be quiet, there's something wrong with you. No, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm trying to explain to you what's going on, but because um, no one is talking about it, we're, we're starting to talk about it now, but at the time, no one was talking about it. No one was expressing it, so I, I didn't have the words. Like I was trying to figure out what am I going through? Like, like we go to church, we praise God, you know, have a good time, but come home, it's like hell. It's like I'm fighting the devil himself. And I'm like, this is this crazy because when you get to the point where you want to murder somebody, that's not good. Hallelujah. And so I kept on saying, Lord, what is this? I said, because I'm trying to explain to people. And like you said earlier, people tell you to shut up. Whatever goes in this house, it stays in this house. Keep your mouth closed, be quiet, and don't say anything. Well, what am I supposed to do with that? And that's why a lot of people are committing suicide now, because they have no outlet. They have no one to talk to, because everybody told them to be quiet. Everybody told them to shut up. 
Everybody tell them, get in the corner. We don't want to hear that. Just be quiet. People need an outlet. They need somebody to talk to to get all this stuff off of them. And we're so quick to criticize. We're so quick to push people down. And sometimes you got to, and sometimes when another person is going through something and you can't handle it because you're already going through something, you have to tell them, look, you need to go to a trained person because I can't handle it. <laughs> I had to tell one of my best friends that I said, baby, I can't, I can't, I can't handle what you're going through. I am so sorry. I love you. I do. But the stuff you're going, I can't handle that. Because when you love somebody so much, you want to fight everybody that's hurting them. Like, like, oh, you you hurt my friend? Okay, look, you know, well, you know, my fighting, my physical fight days is over. I fight with the word of God. <laughs> Glory be to God. I fight with the Bible. I fight with prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. But glory be God, so we got to understand we're in a spiritual battle and the enemy is not playing with us. And, and if he can push a button, he will. So if he know what kind of button to push, he's going to try to do that. So, yeah, that, that's my experience of, you know, that mental stuff. Amen. So I, I, I have a question, and anybody can chime in on this um, question. So I know that... Um, we all come from different walks of life and we all may have different um, spiritual backgrounds. And I know with just the way the world is now, you know, a lot of people believe that mental health and mental illness is demonic. They believe that it's evil. They believe that, that, that it is from the devil and that they believe that something is wrong with us if if we have mental illness or even if we work with people with mental illness they think something wrong with us so i i i, I really want to hear tonight your thoughts um i want to start with coach coach what are your thoughts on that okay so i teach a whole class i teach ministries i and part of my one of my sections in that class is um divine demonic and did in the dsm right understanding that a lot of it is because we don't really know and we're quick to demonize something because we don't understand it and the fact of the matter is that there are are is it if there is a fine line at times but if we are not educated and trauma informed or we don't understand certain things we're quick to want to let place a label on it because that's what we've been taught to do that's what we know to do. Oh, it's, the, it's demonic because I don't understand it. And that's not always the case. Do I think that there are certain times in which the, where we are to take our thoughts captive and bring them under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Do we have the power to do that? Absolutely. But if I don't know how to do it, if nobody's teaching me how to do it, I'm going to be quick to say, oh, it's the devil. It's the devil. No, baby, sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's your lack of understanding. Sometimes you just don't understand. And, and we have to do a better job of educating our community about what mental health looks like. It's, it's about wellness. And so a lot of it is we come from an illness point of view, like, there, like it's a sickness and, and it's not, it's a, it's a wellness issue. And so when I'm, I'm talking about when I'm teaching my class, we literally go through scriptures. And I'm like, do you know that they today they would say that this person is schizophrenic? Mm -hmm. Today they would say that this person is struggling with depression. So they put a name for it. Does it mean that it's the case for that person? No. So while you sitting up there trying to cast out devils instead of actually meeting the need of that person, working with the mental health community around you, creating relationships and referral systems and including that as a part of your ministry basis, you're doing more damage to people than actually getting them the help that they need. Because you want to wow. pray it off of them and lay hands on them. And if it was a spirit, you ain't quite you ain't quite qualified to deal with it yourself. So that's my thoughts on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can second those because that, that is really how I feel about it. Um, Sophia, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think 
when I was going through it, the church said, you know, that my spirit was out. I needed to pray more. I needed to fast more. Um, that I just needed to get into my word more. Uh, but then the doctor was telling me, you know, that's a, a symptom of your depression. That's, you know, you might be going through some type of mania because I had, I couldn't explain the visions and I couldn't explain that I was hearing these things and things would start happening. And the doctor was like, okay, yeah, that, that could be some type of mania. And then the church was like, well, baby, you just need to pray. Like you, you just got to get into your word. And so it was this whole conflict of the two areas of my life. And I think that maybe a lot more than anything pushed me to the brink of wanting to commit suicide because I couldn't reconcile my spiritual life in my natural life. I couldn't, <laughs> the two just wouldn't line up. The medication would make the visions and, you know, the things that I was hearing go away, but then I would also be a zombie. So I couldn't feel anything, but I also couldn't hear from God, but I didn't know I was hearing from God because they were telling me I was crazy. So it was just, mm -hmm. it was a mess. So I think like coach said, we have to, we've got to build a bridge. Like we have to understand that everything, we can't put it all on the spirit realm. It just, we can't rest it all on demons and the devil. It, it doesn't all lie there. You can't just, pray your depression away. I prayed and I tarried and I prayed and I tarried and it didn't go anywhere. And I almost killed myself because of it, because I felt like I wasn't praying and tarrying hard enough because it was not moving. So we can't just tell people, baby, you got to pray harder. Baby, you need to tarry. Baby, you got to fast because that's, that's not making that depression step to the side. We have to teach them how to really deal with the thing. We have to teach people how to feel their feelings in a way that gets them to the next point. Wow, powerful. Can I, can I add what she said? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead, Coach. To your point, Sophia, uh, Sophia we're tripartite, right? Body, soul, and spirit. Well, what is our soul? Our soul is our will, intellect, and emotions. What mm -hmm. is our spirit? It's our beliefs and our convictions, right? So mm -hmm. I can be solid in my faith, but have a wound in my soul that's not mm -hmm. being addressed. And so when we have this wound in our soul, what ends up happening is that's when people want to demonize it, right? No, there's a wound that has been left unattended to, that has not been addressed. And you telling me to pray and I'm solid in my faith, but show me how to fix this. Show me how to feel what I'm feeling. Show me how to change my thinking show me how to do something different because if you don't do that then i'm left to my own devices and even on my best day i was trying to commit suicide so yeah we got to stop telling folks to just pray about it and realize that it's not just about a faith issue and wanting to be hyper religious but some of us got an issue with our soul that needs to be addressed yes lord because that's me sorry <laughs> That's a lot of us, baby. <laughs> That's a lot of us, honey. Don't, 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 don't be sorry. We needed that, baby. Overseer, what are your thoughts? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about, honey. And you know what? That's why I say I want my ministry to be different because I've been in church my whole life, okay? And we have always been taught. Okay, get over there, be quiet, and do what God say do. Okay, I'm suffering. Help me. You know what I'm saying? Give me some help. And, and I'm glad you said that because now people are starting to realize that, you, you know what, we need help in all different kind of avenues because I'm not just that one person. That's why people run away from the church because some people are so nasty. They're so mean and nasty because they have not dealt with all the stuff that's going on inside. They're fighting. So when they are fighting inside, they're going to fight you. The, it could be beautiful outside. And you just have to hide. How you doing? Why are you just hiding me for? I mean, like, <laughs> man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't doing anything to you. I just walk up to you. I'm just trying to say hi. It's because.
because they not dealing with all this stuff and the church has told them to suppress it, just be quiet and keep on pushing. You can't make people do that. So I, and like with my ministry, I'm trying to change that. You know, we talk about everything. So like I always ask people to come on and, and talk because we need to talk about everything. I mean, come on, stop sugarcoating stuff. Let's be real about this. Uh, I think it was two years ago, I had um, two people on, on my platform. We were talking about suicide because one of my little teenage cousins committed suicide. We couldn't find her. It was like, where she at? Then we found that she committed suicide. But, you know, a lot of churches don't talk about that because they go, shh, be quiet, shh. You know, and, but then they try to... Uh, Try to act like um, I was the devil because I had birthed two deaf children. Oh, your mother sin. What did you do? I was the only one who had deaf children in, in all the churches. I called all my family members. Nobody had any deaf children. I'm the only one who got deaf children. I said, well, dad, no. I said, but you know what, Lord, you got me. And, it, and you know God is good because he surrounded me with a whole deaf community. Amen. And they loved on me and they showed me how to raise my children. And I'm telling they still my children's family. I call them they the uncles and the aunts and the mamas and they grandparents. They everything to my children. And I thank God for placing them in my heart because if I, if I had to depend on the church, I would have laid on the ground somewhere and just crawl up in a ball because of all the stuff that they had said to me about my children. I said, those are my babies. God gave them to me. and He knew I can handle it. You know what I'm saying? And I told them as little bitty children, I said, listen, you in a world, they nasty and they not, they not, they don't care you deaf. So we're going to train you. I said, I'm going to train you just like I trained your little brother and everybody else. I got like nine children, but I raised six. Like the first three is my siblings, then the next three I first, and then the other three is my bonus. But the six children that I raised, I, I, when you're 10, you're grown in my house, honey. You're washing clothes. you cleaning up your room. You're doing everything at the age of 10. Hallelujah. So when you get turned 18, you can't walk up here and tell me you don't know. Yes, you do know. You know how to do everything by yourself. And that's how I train all my children. So when people look, because everybody grown, glory be to God. Everybody look at um, my children who are deaf. They travel all over the world by themselves because I didn't put fear in them. You know, I didn't say you can't do this. I said you can do this because the word of God said I could do all things through Jesus Christ. And I put that in them. So they've been to places I've never been. I'll be like, sure, let me get in your backpack. Let me go. <laughs> But you know, God is good. And I'm so glad we talking about this. I'm so excited because we need to talk about this more. That's why I like Taraji, how she said she's opened up these different uh, hospitals for mental illness because when it do come to us, they brush us off, especially in the classroom. And I can't stand it because I've been working with children since 1990. And what they do is let, let a child come in there and got an issue. Oh, they bad. They eat no. They need and they want to label us ADHD and um everything else. They want to label you anything that they can give you a pill. That's what they want to label you. Yep. Because I'm telling you, they want to label me slow and put me in the slow class. Now you tell me what honor student should be in the slow class. Hmm? But yeah, that's what they want to label me. Because now I'm telling you, that's what they wanted to label me. But you don't understand. I lost I, I lost my mom 12 days after my 16th birthday. I, I struggled with some things. I, I, I went through some things. And, and you you just don't understand. Y'all told me to be strong. But what, I, what was I supposed to do? You know, things like that. I don't want people to have to go through. My, I don't want my brown community to have to continue to hurt in silence. We don't, we're not alone. I want people to know they're not alone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and allow um, everyone to share how people can follow you, how they can support what you're doing, how they can connect with you, because that's very important. Um, I'm going to start with Coach um, TK. Okay. Um, so how you can connect with me is you can go to www.mindingmyvisionllc.com. 
You can find me on Instagram at Minding My Vision Official. And then on Facebook, it's author Takira TK Terrell. On LinkedIn, it's the same thing, Takira TK Terrell. Um, so there's a couple different ways. It's either going you're gonna find me either by my name or by my company or my brand. <laughs> um, but those are the ways to get in contact with me. Amen. Amen. Do you have anything that's coming up? Yes, I am um, getting ready to. So I have a coaching program and things like that. But in my prayer and in talking to the Lord, um, a lot of feedback and the feedback from my clients is they really like um, the boot camp that I do. And it's really um, about women aligning themselves and coming into the alignment with who God says that they are. And it's an and it's an intense program. I ain't gonna lie, but I love it. <laughs> And mm -hmm. it's for the woman who is really like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've been stuck. I've been stagnant. I've been bent over for most of my life in terms of like the woman in Luke 13, who was just bent over and Jesus, she had this encounter with the Lord and she didn't have to fight for herself. He fought for her and she was able to stand up straight. It's for that woman who's ready to say, you know what? I'm ready to stand up straight. I'm ready to get myself together. I'm tired of living and existing like this. I need, but I need some help. I need somebody to help me bridge that gap. I, I know the spiritual things to do. I know some things, but I, I just need some, some methods to help me do that. And so that's what that program is. I have an event with um, my Chia Burnett in August, um, talking about the same thing, women in mental health. Um, I have an event in September in Detroit. That's an in-person event. <laughs> Um, where we're just collaborating, women coming together to understand the importance of um, business and mental health as well. So I'm excited. I got quite a few things coming up. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for stopping thank by you. and sharing with us on tonight. Um, I definitely um, thank you for stopping by. Sophia, how can we connect with you and support the things that you're doing? Well, I'm on Sophia Monique Cooper. You can reach me by email, prescarights at gmail.com. Uh, my blog is called My Extremely Anxious Thoughts. Um, it's it's simple just because I just wanted to put something out there. So it's I think it's just blog.com. I don't know. Um, and that's really it. I have an Instagram. I'm never on it just being honest. Um, I don't really have a lot coming up because I'm on this push to finish my master's degree. I've got four classes left um, and I'm going to do those in four months. So four classes, four months, I'm done. Um, so I don't, have, <laughs> I don't have anything lined up. I am trying to finish book five as a graduation gift to myself. So October, I think 16th it is, is my last day of class. That's also the day I'm going to pop that book out. Um, so right now, that's all I have coming up because that's all I can handle. Uh, but next year is probably, next year is the year I plan to fully put myself out there and write the vision and become the woman of God I'm supposed to be. But I had to Line some things up first. So, amen. Well, thank you for stopping by and sharing with us on tonight. My pleasure. Tamala, you know I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Tamala, how can we support you and um, connect with you? I am on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, I have a podcast. If you type in Come Home, Stop Talking About It, I'm on that podcast. I um, This Friday, uh, I'm going to, I have created my own anthology, and Angela is part of it. <laughs> and I'm so excited. We, we got a workbook release, and then next month, we're going to have the reference book release. So I am just so excited because I'm doing so I'm stepping out my you know comfort zone, doing things different. I love that. And in July, I'm walking the red carpet because my song, and I'm just excited for what God is doing. And I'm telling you, God used Angela to put me on this little radio thing first. She put my song on the radio first. So I just give God the praise because they open doors. When she did that, other doors still open. So 
I just give God the praise. I thank him for all things. Amen. 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 Well, I just want to thank you guys for stopping by and sharing with us on tonight. And I definitely want to thank you for just being who and what you are in this world and allowing God to use you in your different um, in your different lanes. Um, so thank you. Before we leave, um, I know we were supposed to have some more guests on tonight. But before we leave, um, I, I want you guys to share something inspirational to the audience, those that are tuned in, um, that can encourage them. Because you never know who may be listening and may be going through something. I just want you to share something inspirational before we close out tonight. I'm going to start with um, Coach TK. Okay. Okay. Um, it's something that I tell all of my clients. It's the tagline for my business. It's the tagline for my life. Live your truth and not your trauma. Live mm -hmm. your truth and not your trauma. So what does that mean? Sometimes our trauma does become our truth. And when we start to separate the two, we start to understand that I don't have to live as my trauma. When I start showing up for myself, then I start living as myself, the woman, the man that God has called me to be. But I have to understand that I can. The beautiful thing about God is that he is the author, the finisher. Right. And um, most of us here have done either some kind of co-authoring book. Right. You own the copyrights to what you wrote in that story. Right. So when you work through your trauma, when you start working through things that like that, you become the copyright owner of your story instead of your story owning you. You co-author, you participate in your healing. That's our portion. That's what we can do. We do not have to sit and live as if we are still under the thumb of our oppression, under the thumb of our trauma, under the thumb of our pain. You can live your truth. It is possible. Is it going to require you to work and stay in the process? Absolutely. But you are worth it. You're worth it. Wow. Sophia? Um, I, I tell people all the time, it's okay to feel your feelings. You, for whatever reason, we're told to, like overseer said, sit down, shut up. You know, what happens in my house stays in my house. We're, we're, it's ingrained in us. It's programmed in us. It, it, it's just a thing. So my thing to people, it is, it's okay to feel your feelings. <laughs> you need to feel your feelings. You got to process all that stuff. You got to walk through all that stuff because the way out is the way through. And it's not easy. It is not easy. It is pain. It is tears. It is heartache. But you need to feel your feelings because you can't get on the other side if you're not willing to walk through it. You can't just blink and be over the wall. We're not genie. We don't do that. You've got to feel your feelings and process it all and deal with it all. And that's the only way through. Amen. Overseer? It's okay to be different. It's okay to be yourself. And whatever God has told you to do, do it. And leave the naysayers out. You know, you always have somebody tell you, why are you doing that? You shouldn't do it. And that's why it's good to just get some support. And you can't tell everybody what your next move going to be. But do it. Do it with fear and just keep it moving. That's all I got to say. Amen. Amen. Well, I truly have enjoyed you guys on tonight. I want to thank you guys for stopping by and sharing with us. I truly have been blessed. I pray that someone out there have been blessed by something that you shared. I pray that your night is blessed. And anytime I can do anything to support you guys on your platforms, please please feel free to reach out to me. Of course, you can reach out to me, um, Queen of Collaborations, or through Aspiring Authors Magazine. 
um, I am here because I am a voice for my brown community. I'm tired of being brushed under the rug. I'm tired of hurting in silence. So I want to be the voice for that person that thinks that they don't have a voice. So I thank you. I applaud you for all that you do. Continue to be that voice for that voiceless person. And thank you for doing what you do for mental health. I love you guys. And I pray that you are blessed. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you guys for tuning in for yet another episode of Up Close and Personal with Angela as we showcase and highlight Mental Health Awareness Month. You've had an opportunity to meet some amazing women that walk in the mental health. They, they may not all be professionals in the mental health field, but they do something as, as an advocate for mental health. If you are going through something, Know that there's help out there. You don't have to go through it alone. We have people that look like you, that want to be there for you and support you. So if you are in need, please, please feel free to reach out to anybody on this platform. Also, as of July of this year, the 988 hotline will be live where you can just dial 988, just like you dial 911 for assistance, you'll be able to dial 988 for mental health assistance. Right now, you can call the um, mental health hotline, but as of July 2022, you will be, I think it's July 16th, 2022, you'll be able to pick up your phone and dial 988 if you are having a mental health crisis or if you are in need. So I definitely want to thank everyone that stopped by on tonight and shared with us. You have been tuned in to Walk in Purpose with Angela, up close and personal with Angela on behalf of Aspiring Authors Magazine. This is our opportunity to bring awareness to mental health in the Brown community. If you've been blessed by anything that was shared on tonight, please share this in your circle of influence. Until next time, be blessed and know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.